Kylie Jenner attended Paris Fashion Week a few months back. I don't actually know the date. I could easily Google it. People are still talking about and kind of speculating over, is that the phrase, what happened to her face. Surgeons are saying she's had too much surgery, too much filler. Other surgeons are saying, you know what, she's probably just tired. And I do have an opinion on this. Not that I know better than a surgeon or a um, cosmetic person. I mean, I could if I tried. Let's talk about it. Before we get into this, do please consider subscribing. Give this video a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe to my reaction and commentary channel right here for videos that aren't necessarily beauty related. Leave a comment also as well. Um, just put puffy eye if you don't know what to comment. So Kylie Jenner attended Paris Fashion Week. People said she looked completely different, which I don't think she did. I actually think she looked like her, but with different hair. And footage emerged of her posing, you know, for the press, and people started to go crazy, feral, about her under eyes. There seemed to have been some kind of bump some kind of skin texture, God forbid, underneath her eye. And it started to make people speculate what it could be. A lot of people jumped on the she had too much filler kind of bad wagon, the toxic gossip train, some people might call it. And some people say different. Now, Kylie Jenner is no stranger to surgery. I do just wanna say before we get into this though, no matter what your opinions are on filler and Botox, they're two different things, by the way. Cosmetic surgery in general, aging gracefully, whatever you want, your, whatever your opinions are, what people choose to do with their bodies really is none of our business, let's be real. The only time I think people should be like getting angry about it is at the surgeons who, who purposely overfill lips, you know, do massive breasts, do terrible, terrible, dangerous surgeries. Or when like an influencer or content creator claims that um, a product is a result of their cosmetic procedure. So for example, if I had lip filler and I was like, yeah, I haven't had lip filler, it's just this lip balm making my lips plump, like that would be a lie, right? So we should be angry at that and then also angry at people, surgeons or cosmetic, what are they called, estheticians, who borderline like disfigure people. That's when I think we should have an opinion and be a little bit angry about it. Kylie, as we know, has had a history about lying about her lip filler. We all know she started a huge makeup empire by simply like overlining her lips and then suddenly she releases lip kits because she had this big pout. She did eventually get lip filler and, and admitted to this, but before that she, she did genuinely just overline her lips. Like you can see it's just overlining in pictures, but she has had other procedures as well. She's had her nose done. She's had her breasts done. Her nose is actually a bit of a sadder story because she heard, overheard her mum talking about her nose and then ever since then felt that she needed a procedure on her nose. That's kind of sad, right? All common surgeries. I was actually booked in to get my nose done at some point, but then I was signed off work. I got glandular fever and I was signed off work for three months. This is years and years and years and years ago. So the surgery never happened. I'm glad it didn't now, to be fair. But I do get filler in my nose now. So the one procedure that everybody is accusing Kylie of having is tear trough fillers. I always thought it was called tear through filler until I actually read it properly, until my dyslexia allowed me to read it properly. And they're saying that this bump on the face is the result of overfilling this area. By the way, why I'm talking about this today is because I want to talk about lighting and stuff. I want people to understand lighting and, and cameras and stuff like that a little bit more, but we'll get to that a little bit later. For those of you who aren't familiar, tear trough filler is used to reduce like the hollowness around the eyes here. So by injecting dermal fillers, in this area, between the lower eyelid and the cheekbone. And this is kind of filled because as we age, it can potentially lose volume right here, and it can give us more of a sunken eye look, which is kind of linked to aging. Sunken eyes, hollow eyes, looks can, can be quite aging on some people. And this filler is typically made of hyaluronic acid, like a lot of facial filler is. And what that does is, is it holds water, so it almost like, plumps up that area and the more hydrated you are, the more it plumps and it can look smoother and, and more youthful, they say. It's like minimally invasive. You can get it done like on your lunch break. They get a can, is it called cannula? Cannula, like the long and shove it up through here and then fill in in these areas here. Let me tell you, it was, I've had it done twice. 
um, years and years and years ago. There's no remnants off it now. As you can see, I'm very hollow there. It was it was a little bit uncomfortable, and my God, it bruised. It bruised like crazy. I d and I didn't really notice the difference. I didn't, I thought it was like kind of, I guess, smooth-ish. So people are saying that this bump is that filler migrating down here, which a lot of people are talking about. They talk about migration, and if they really don't know what they're talking about. So, But this is what, let's hear what the surgeons and estheticians are saying. This is what happens when teardrop filler goes wrong. Look what's happened to Kylie. Kylie Jenner has openly said that she's had various filler treatments, but now it's really starting to become visible on her face. In these recent photos of Kylie, you can clearly see a significant puffiness to her under eye. Now this is not a normal sign of aging, especially for someone of Kylie's age. And it is a telltale sign of overfilled tear trough filler. The tear trough is a groove which extends down from the inner eye to the mid face and is caused by a ligament which is pulling the tissue down so that when light falls on the face, a shadow is formed in this area. Filler that's injected under the tear trough projects this area so that when light falls on the face, there's less shadowing. But when too much filler is injected into this area, it creates puffiness, which leads to more shadowing, making the eyes look worse. Now, the good thing is that these complications can be prevented. I still routinely do tear trough filler treatments in my clinic and still get good results. The way to achieve good results is to underfill the tear trough area to reduce the risk of causing puffiness. And secondly, it's so important to use products that do not attract a lot of water that might potentially swell with time. Now, the good news for Kylie is that she can have this filler dissolved, which will remove the puffiness and restore her to her natural self. Kylie's face has definitely changed a lot over the years. Do you guys think she should ease up on the fillers and restore a more natural look? Let me know in the comments. I know Kylie Jenner's injector is probably going through it this week. Everywhere on my feed, whether it be TikTok or Instagram, this image is circulating. People talking about what exactly is going on with her face. I'm going to break it down for you guys right now. Before I start breaking this down, I just want to state this is no hate to Kylie Jenner. I think she is gorgeous, but I do think that her injector has done her a disservice by overfilling her at such a young age. So what you're mainly seeing in this picture is a malar mound. It's that puffiness right above that harsh line that kind of splits diagonally on her left cheek. Malar mounds are caused by a disruption in lymphatics. Your lymphatic vessels are vessels that carry extra fluid and help your body get rid of it. We have several lymphatic vessels in this area, and if they are disrupted in some sort of way, they don't drain fluid properly in this area. Malar mounds can be caused by several different things. One, genetics two, improperly placed filler, or three, too much filler being placed in certain areas. Now, this is my personal professional opinion as an aesthetic injector, nothing is confirmed. I think her malar mounds are caused by overfilling of her tear troughs, improperly placed cheek filler, maybe too superficially in this area to disrupt her lymphatics. Some of the ways that we can treat malar mounds is by dissolving the filler and doing radio frequency microneedling in the area. Drop your questions below. So here's the thing, this could be a number of things. This could be genetic. And it's called malar edema, where you have a lot more fluid retention around the eyes. If you've had filler before, and we don't know whether she's had filler in this area, filler attracts a thousand times its weight in water. So particularly in the tear trough area, as well as the cheek, if you have fluid retention, it gets worse. And this is that unnatural appearance that you see in that area. If you already have fluid retention and you wake up with puffy eyes, it's not a good idea to have filler in that area because it will only get worse. If you've been over-injected in that area, this can occur too. So the best thing is, is to remove the filler safely and softly within that area to release the tension in that area and hopefully the puffiness reduces. Sometimes these cases are even semi-permanent. So you have to be really careful where you go for your injections, as well as who's performing it, because they need to know the anatomy, they need to do a right assessment, and even the celebs sometimes get it wrong. So there's mixed reactions. People are saying it's filler gone wrong, absorbing fluids and swelling, and some people are saying that genetics are also playing a part in this. But I also think that some people might just be shocked to find out that this could just be her face. And maybe how it's looked for a long time, maybe longer than we know. Lighting can drastically change people's faces, texture, bumps, lumps, etc. So I want to take a look at Getty Images. If you don't know what Getty Images are, they are always, it's like a, it's like a media, digital media database, music, film, photography, something else. And usually what you'll see, like if there's a big event, 
the photographers usually have their images on Getty Images. So they're always high quality, unretouched, unfiltered pictures. You can literally go there, type in a celebrity's name and events that they have been to. And we're talking years and years backlog are right there, all the pictures from those events. So you can go there, for example, type in Kylie Jenner and see um, pictures from events from when she was young. There's a, a, a whole history there. However, the Jenners and Kardashians are kind of notorious for taking these images that look true to life and editing them. So it looks like they look that great in real life. And there's also been some comparison videos where they show the Getty images, image versus the one that they edited. So let's take a look at Kylie before filler, right? Any surgery, anything like that. I'm leaning more towards the side that genetics are playing a part in this also. But you can see in these unedited pictures that this bump is actually there when she was younger. Like, yes, it looks more exaggerated in recent pictures or recent videos, not denying it's filler at all, right? But I think it's been made to look worse than it actually is because of lighting and the way the makeup is. Let's take a look at an image that's taken in more complimentary lighting. And I wanna talk about lighting because as a professional makeup artist, I was always on shoots and you really have to work with the lighting, the different lighting situations. The way the makeup looks wherever you're doing with the makeup, whether that be shoved in a corner of a room, in some back room, wherever, looks different to when you actually get on set. So the lighting situation is completely different. So you have to be very aware of the lights. So let's talk matte surfaces, right? This is a matte surface here. It's absorbing the light. It's blurring this area. If I was to completely wet my face, look how much detail appears on my skin if I wet it, if I make that surface shiny. Okay, now you can see these areas here. You can see the hollows under my eye. If I look up, you can also see I have one of those bumps there. Mattifying blurs texture, making something wet, making something highlighted, making something glowy, accentuates, it brings it forward, it captures the light and reflects it off so you can see more detail, you see more shine. This is why I don't like highlights with glitter in. I like them to be smooth because it looks smoother. Let me turn off some of these lights so you can see what I mean, right? So here I am with no lights. <laughs> I'm gonna take this little light and I wanna hold it in different areas so you can see the different, te the different textures and details you can see. Look how hollow my eyes look suddenly. Whereas if I bring it a little bit forward, it looks less. See here, see this? This is what Kylie has, this like, uh, I have no filler here, no filler at all. And when I, I had it, it was years and years and years ago, it would've been gone by now. But see how this lighting situation changes absolutely everything. Okay, take a look at this from Vogue, right? I'm gonna talk you through this. So she has light on the left side of her face, not much light coming from the right side, so it's casting shadows on her face. Flashes are going off, so that's gonna give you a smooth finish. Now we're in even light, everything looks a lot smoother. And now the light is completely evened out, I look a lot smoother. If I was to mattify my face now completely, we could get rid of more detail. That's how light works. So if we were to completely mattify this area, smooth. Smooth, smooth, smooth. Because light is being absorbed by a matte surface. That's gonna be horribly textured in real life because I just put it into a wet. <laughs> so whenever a flash goes off, it's bright, even light. It smooths everything out. No bumps, it's equal light. I've always had that thing for as long as I can remember. When I was a child, I had it. It's always, always been there. In some lighting situations, it does look awful. So in my mind, it's a mix of everything. I don't think it's as bad as people make it out to be. People look at this stuff, but they also need to think about lighting, the makeup, comparisons to the same day, you know, everything like that. It's clearly a lighting situation, mixed with a little bit of a filler and a plump face situation, but it's not as bad as people make it out to be. I would love to know your opinions on this situation down below in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye guys.